Hey everyone, it's Sean Smith and welcome back to our video series, The 7 Deadliest Goal Setting Mistakes that Will Absolutely Crush Your Direct Sales Business and obviously how to avoid all of these mistakes so you can get into motion. Hopefully you've liked the first three videos so far. Today I'm going to be talking about a relatively controversial topic. Uh, which is, is how to use goal posters and affirmations. I say it's controversial because almost everybody's you know, telling us that we need to use affirmations and we need to use goal posters, which I agree with. I'm not disputing whether we should do that or not. It's just that most people don't do it the right way. Think about what the purpose of an affirmation or a goal poster is, and I'm going to lump them together because the same concepts apply to both. I will talk a little bit about them separately though, but the purpose of an affirmation and a goal poster is basically to get us in motion, is to put us in a, a place of inspiration, to get us going, to get us excited about our goals, and ultimately taking action. So here's the way you can tell if your affirmations or goal posters are working or not. Are you taking action? If you're not taking action, then they're not working. If you are taking action, then they are working. Now if you don't have a goal poster or affirmation, obviously I want you to you know, to, to put that in play and test it and try it, but the ultimate goal is for you to get in motion. Now let me talk about these separately for a second. I had a lady in a seminar one time, you know, we were talking about affirmations. She says, every time I do my affirmations at night, I wake up in the morning and I feel sick to my stomach. And she says she felt depressed basically. So I said, what are your affirmations? And I don't remember the, the words that she used right now, but it was something about like, I am able to succeed at a high level or something like that. I think it was something about success. And when we drilled down, what we realized is that she's always had a story in her mind called, I'm not good enough to succeed. So here's what she was doing. In order to try to overcome that story, she would affirm to herself that she could be successful. But the problem is, none of your stories in your mind, the negative stories, the limiting beliefs, those fears, the negative head talk, none of those were created by affirmations. So they probably won't be uncreated by affirmations either, right? So what happens is if you've got this negative story called I'm not good enough to succeed and then you introduce this affirmation called I am good enough to succeed and you read the affirmation I probably should have had like hand puppets <laughs> next time I talk about this I'll get some hand puppets um, but you've got this affirmation that says I'm good enough to succeed let's say and you've got this story called no you're not when you read your affirmation basically all you're doing is you're creating a debate you're creating an argument yes I am no I'm not yes I am no I'm not but then what happens is when she would go to sleep, this voice would shut up, but guess which voice was still there to keep going? This no, I'm not, I'll never achieve, all of this negative head talk had basically been engaged by the affirmation, and then while she was sleeping, this one just kept going. And that's why she wakes up feeling terrible because her negative stories were basically just bombarding her as she slept and made her feel bad. So what's really important is that you don't engage your negative head talk in just a simple debate. Because what happens is, as this side argues, this side argues too. And the more that this side argues, the stronger the arguments become, right? I mean, think about how you create a strong muscle, you do it with resistance. So if you yell here and it yells back, you're actually causing resistance here that can strengthen the story. So what's important with your affirmations is that you affirm things to yourself that basically don't engage these negative stories about you and that kind of can't be argued against, right? So for an example, um, an affirmation that's really dangerous would be something like, I have $100,000 in the bank. Actually, I hadn't even thought of this. The reason that that's not good is because it's not true. Right? If you're affirming to yourself that you are a certain level in your company, you know, I am a sales director, I am a regional vice president, I am a district manager, whatever it is. If you're affirming to yourself that you are that title, there's going to be a piece in almost everybody's mind that goes, no, you're not. I mean, that's a lie. And so you generally don't want to lie in your affirmations. But now a lot of people say, well, aren't you supposed to kind of act as if you've already achieved your goal? And yes, you are, but you can do it without lying. And here's the way you do it. If this is what you want to be, let's say you want to be a district manager in your company, 
My question for my clients is always, what are the steps below that? In other words, who do you need to become in order to create the position of district manager? So somebody would probably say, I want to be a person of influence. I want to be a leader with integrity. And I want to be somebody who shows others how to do the business, let's say. And I'm just making these up, up, up off the top of my head. So here's my advice to you. Instead of affirming this title, which is dependent on these three things, and it's also based on tangible results, which you don't control. I'll talk a lot more about control in another video. I say remove the title and affirm these three things. So your affirmation can say, and I'm sorry if I forgot exactly what I said, but your affirmation can say, I am a leader of integrity. See, that's not going to engage any of your limiting beliefs, at least not at the same level right? Unless you have a story called, I don't have integrity, but usually people don't have that kind of a story. Or you might say, I, I continually show people how to do the business. You're not going to bump up against any of your stories by saying that. And I forget what the first one is in the moment here, but whatever it was, uh, you can affirm those characteristics of the person. And what we're doing is we're dipping into the intangible world. When you affirm tangible results, you're usually wrong because they're not happening now. And so you're trying to affirm something that's not true. And you're focused on things that you don't control. When you play at the tangible level, you're, 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 you're in dangerous territory. When you play at the intangible level, though, you can control all of those things. It's much easier to do. It's not based on long-term results. It's not based on anybody else showing up and joining or buying or any of that stuff. These are things that you can decide to do today. That's why that kind of affirmation is much more powerful for most of us, right? Now let's talk about goal posters. I was with a client one time and she's like, every time I look at my goal poster, kind of the same story. I get irritated and I don't ever do my work. And I said, well, what do you have on your goal poster? And she said, you know, I've got it all laid out. I've got the title, of you know what I want to achieve and I've got all these circles of all the people that are going to join my business and all this stuff and it looks fantastic and I look at it and I want to throw up is <laughs> basically what she said and I said well that's probably because your highest purpose doesn't have anything to do with circles <laughs> and she goes what are you talking about I said well you're taking a look at something that has a bunch of circles you, you're creating like a pyramid of circles and that's not engaging you and so I said, you know, give me an idea of what you really want in this business. I mean, when you hit those levels, once you get the financial freedom that you're wanting, what are you going to do with it? And she got really emotional, actually. And she started talking about having a horse farm, you know, because her daughter rides horses. And she was just talking about having this farm and having a couple horses and the time that she would spend with her daughter on this horse farm. And it's just bonding. And the daughter would be so lit up with joy and stuff. And she starts crying. And I said, listen go get a picture of that horse farm and put that on your goal poster because that is tied to your emotion. You know, that's tied to something that's stirring up some really positive energy in you and the circles aren't. So if you have something on your goal poster that you're looking at and it's not exciting you, then you're doing the exact opposite of what your goal poster is meant to do, which is to excite you and to get you in motion, right? Now, most people will put tangible rewards on their goal posts. They'll put pictures of cars. They'll put pictures of money. They'll put pictures of them getting you know, recognized on stage. But most of the time, tangible focus leads to bad stuff, like I was saying with the affirmations. Tangible focus of, I'm going to go after that car, generally leads to bad stuff. Now, here's one of the reasons why it leads to bad stuff. You've probably had that goal before and you probably didn't get it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on your goal poster. So if you've gone after this car before and you didn't get it and then you're trying to feed the exact same image to your unconscious mind, there's a piece of your unconscious mind that is triggered to failure when you look at that goal. And I know people who've been trying to get goals that could be achieved in three months, you know, six months, a year tops. And they've had the same goal for five years in a row, for 10 years in a row. And, you know, what they've done is they've built up what I call motivational scar tissue. Every time they look at that goal, there's some negative scar tissue that comes up. You know, it triggers failure and nobody likes to fail. So that triggers negative emotions. 
And usually that's what actually creates the feelings of overwhelm or not wanting to get in motion. It's because you're feeding yourself a, an, an image that actually demotivates you. It does the opposite of what you're wanting to do. So my advice, similar to the affirmations, is move into the intangible world. You can either replace that picture with a picture like the horse farm or your family or something that gets your juices flowing or just add the intangible right next to the picture. So let's say you have a, a car that you really want. Put the, the, uh, the intangible motivation like right next to the car. I would actually suggest that the pictures physically touch each other so that you can make the connection at the unconscious level that this is what I'm after, but this is why I'm after it, right? Your affirmations and your goal posters should elicit the why from inside of you, not just the what that you're going after. And usually what happens is when you tap into that deeper source of you know, inspiration, you'll actually take action on your goals. Now that requires having an action plan and I'll get into that at another point in time as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Take a look at your affirmations, take a look at your goal posters, see how you can incorporate some of the intangible desire and help get you more in motion so that you can take advantage of this business. I mean, this is an incredible opportunity, this industry. It has the ability to, you know, to give you leverage and to give you freedom and to give you obviously recurring income that can help you achieve so many things in life but one of the worst things you can do is plug into the tangible, logical side of your brain that causes it all to fall down from the get-go. So this is about setting you up to succeed instead of setting yourself up to fail. So I'll come to you again probably tomorrow with another video on the seven deadliest goal setting mistakes. Leave me a comment or ask me a question. I'll do whatever I can to respond to each and every one personally. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.